Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be going through the simplest sort of case that you will find when we're horizontally summating individual demand to find market demand. And that will be when the price axis intercepts of our individual consumers' individual demand curves when they are equal to one another. It's a good case to go through as a starting point if you're being introduced to the idea of horizontal summation and finding market demand. So I'm just going to do an example. And in my example, we have two consumers. The equation QD1 is equal to 120 minus P. That will be consumer number one's demand function. And QD2 is equal to 60 minus P over two. That's consumer two's demand function. Now we're going to be really clear. Consumer number one and consumer number two are the only two consumers in the market for this good. And using our consumer's individual demand functions, we're going to find our market demand function, which is QD of P, which will be an equation which relates the total amount demanded in the market, that's a big QD, to each price P. And we'll also draw out our market demand too. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is draw out the demand curves of our individual consumers just next to one another. It's a useful first step. So let's draw out some axes for consumer number one, and I'll find the price axis intercept by setting QD1 equal to zero. So I get zero is equal to 120 minus P. If I add P to both sides, this solves for P is equal to 120 when Q is equal to zero. I'll mark that in as our price axis intercept. I'll solve for the quantity axis intercept. That's when price is equal to zero. So substituting in P is equal to zero, I find that QD1 is equal to, well, just 120. I'll put that point in as well, and we can join those two points up, and that's consumer number one's demand curve. Let's do the same thing for consumer number two. I'll find the price axis intercept by setting QD2 equal to zero, and I get zero is equal to 60 minus P over two. If I add P over two to both sides, I get P over two is equal to 60. And that solves for price is equal to 120. I just multiply both sides by two and I'll mark that in that's our price axis intercept. I'll solve for the quantity axis intercept. I'm going to set P is equal to zero. And that solves for QD is equal to, well, 60. I'll put that point in and I can join those two points up and that's consumer number two's demand curve. And what you'll notice when we put these two curves next to one another is that the price axis intercepts are equal, which means that the highest price in which our consumers are engaged in, in this market, it's the same over both consumers. And that means that finding market demand is really easy. Now our market demand, since these guys are the only two consumers in the market, is just going to be the sum of how much consumer number one demands plus how much consumer number two demands and we sum that up over every price. It's called horizontal summation because we're summing up the variable that's on the horizontal axes, the quantity variable, and we're doing that for each price. And we can demonstrate this for one special price when the price is zero. So when the price is free, you can see here that well, consumer number one demands 120, consumer number two demands 60. So together, given that they're the only two consumers in this market, they will demand well 180, right? So that must be the quantity demanded in the market when the price is zero. That's 120 plus 60. So this will be our quantity axis intercept for our market demand. Now we also know that the price axis intercept of market demand, well, that must be the highest price that will be borne by any one consumer in the market. But in this case, it's equal over both of our consumers. So the price axis intercept must be 120, the same as both of our consumers. And now magically, we have two points on uh, our market demand curve. We can join them up and that's our market demand curve. Now this line here is the sum of consumer one and consumer two's demand. For every price, we sum up the quantities and we do get this line. I'll demonstrate this in a second, but before we do that, let's find our demand function algebraically. So I'll clear these notes. 
And algebraically, well, our market demand function will be big Q D of P. So our market demand function is equal to our consumer number one's demand function, Q D one of P, plus our consumer number two's demand function, Q D two of P. And that's equal to, well, we know their demand functions. We, we have those right at the beginning. It's 120 minus P plus 60 minus P over two. And that's equal to, if we add the two constants, we get 180, and then we can just put minus P minus P over two. We can rewrite that middle term as two P over two, and that enables us to take away those two last terms from one another. So we get 180 minus three P, we take away the numerators and we leave the denominator as is over two. Now, I will say here, it's really important that we make sure when we add up our demand functions, our dem demand functions are expressed with quantity on the left hand side. So when we have our demand function in this form, we notate that QD of P, like I have been uh, putting on the screen. If you have an inverse demand function, it will have price, the price variable on the left hand side. So that's P of QD and you'll have P is equal to some stuff. Now, if you have your demand function in this format, you are going to need to uh, rearrange your demand function until quantity is on the left hand side uh, before you add your functions up. If you add your functions up and P's on the left hand side, you're not going to be horizontally summating. You're not adding up each quantity for every price, you're actually adding up each price for every quantity, which is something completely different. In any case, we have our equation and this equation actually makes sense. Let me show you. If we check our equation to find the quantity axis intercept of market demand, so we set price is equal to zero, we see that quantity demanded is equal to, well, 180. That's the same quantity axis intercept we found before when we were just looking at our diagram. The price axis intercept is the same also. We see when we substitute QD is equal to zero into our market demand equation, we get zero is equal to 180 minus three P on two. If we add three P on two to both sides, we get three P on two is equal to 180. Now we can multiply 180 by two and then divide by three to solve for that price variable and that's 120, so confirmed. Now, just to demonstrate what's happened to test our calculations and to show this horizontal summation one more time, let's just imagine the price is, let's say 100. Well, we know from our demand curve for consumer number one that if price was 100, then quantity demanded would be, well, that would be 120 minus 100, so 20. For consumer number two, if the price is 100, that quantity demanded for consumer two would be 60 minus 100 over two, 100 over two is 50, 60 minus 50 is 10. So 20 from consumer one, 10 from consumer two, so it must be 30 all up, right? Well, using our market demand equation, let's see what's happening. If the price in the market is 100, we get QD is equal to 180 minus three times 100 divided by two. Three times 100 is 300, divided by two is 150, 180, take away 150 is 30. So that is all making sense. It looks like we did our algebra correctly. Now a complication could occur if our consumers do stop demanding at different prices because then it will be the case for some prices, only some consumers are in and others are out. So we have to split up our, our market demand into different sections. But in this case, this easiest case, our consumers are demanding over exactly the same range of prices uh, and the price axis intercepts are the same. So adding it up is, is pretty easy. I have done a video which goes through the more complicated case before. I'll link to it in the description uh, below. I hope that this video has helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching my content. You can also check out my website. Uh, I'm building it up now. So it's www.econhelp.com.au and access additional notes, lots of practice material and other content to help support your studies. Thanks so much, guys. Hope you have a good one.